Hello, in this A-Frame Web VR tutorial, we're going to show you how to load an object. We're going to be using the object loader to load a wavefront object, but you can use it to load a collider, lo a collider model as well. If you go onto the A-Frame website, there's a bunch of documentation, really great documentation that shows you how to load different models, do different things. This series will cover all the basics. But beyond that, if you want extra bits and pieces, if you want to learn about it a bit more, recommend going to the A-Frame website. They've done an amazing job in creating a good looking website that is easy to use. I always find a lot of the time with frameworks, their documentation side, for whatever reason, isn't very good. Maybe it lacks content, which sometimes it does, unfortunately, especially from, even, I mean, even from big frameworks, from big companies or they have so many assumptions and it's just like you're skipping code but I don't know how to use this framework yet or it's just not very good <laughs> but luckily it has good documentation. So let's just start praising A-frame documentation for a moment and start talking about model loading. So what we've got is a material file in here. There's also an object file, but it doesn't actually display the object file in Sublime for some reason. I don't know, I haven't even actually Googled why that is. Pro no, I'm just gonna Google that. See if anyone's ever come across that. So, sublime.obj, let's see what comes up. Filter our files with given extension. I know I've sort of gone off on a tangent here. Just give me. Uh, actually, I think that it's probably in the settings that it does. Yeah, file exclude pattern. So again, it doesn't really bother me. You may be fussed by that. You can use either a different ID if you're already using one that works or, or, or displays the file. Fantastic. If not, you can just go into settings and just change the exclude pattern. So first of all, as usual, with any external file, you can be using the asset manager, recommend trying to use it directly. That's not the recommended way, but be great for learning. So let's put a dash assets, close off, put the closing tag for this element inside here. We're gonna do a dash asset dash item. We're going to apply an ID of object. So this would be the .obj file that we cannot see at the moment, but I'll show you it is there. I'm going to put a source of models for slash pokey ball dash vray. I think you can guess what this model is going to be of or have a good guess. .obj. And now let's just close this off. Oopsie daisy. One thing I just want to mention is it's recommended once you've exported the object files, you don't start renaming it because what you'll find a lot of the time is inside, especially when you have models that have loads of external materials or textures or image files, etc. etc., they refer to those files. So, unless you plan on going to into let's say the object file and changing the material file it's referring to then going into the material file and changing the image file that it's referring to you can do that but with complex models it just becomes too much of a pain so try and name it when you're exporting it or saving it from some application like blender or autodesk 3d Max, autodesk is the company sorry autodesk 3ds max or autodesk maya for example or any of those tools in a name that you are happy with just for something i thought i'd mention just in case you thought oh i'll rename this and it doesn't work a uh, and again that's not an a frame issue i don't want you to think that it is that's just an issue with the way the, the linkage of the material files and the object files is done so we're going to put asset ooh, no asset dash item id this is going to be the material you have to link it separately because you could use the object without a material you could use the material for other objects because maybe you have several cubes for example and you or actually you think of it different yeah, yeah maybe you have several cubes and you're only using two different textures you could be reusing the material for a different ones so it's not linked to the particular object in particular let's say so what we're going to do is put models for slash pokey ball dash v ray 
dot mtl now let's just close off the assets argument tag and now we can actually do a dash obj dash model source hash object so like i said try and do a direct loading method as well again it's not recommended but it'd be great for learning material you put mtl attribute equals hash material again try and do the direct loading for this one as well and now let's close it off save it let's go back to our browser refresh see what we get okay so what's happened is because it's obviously spawned it in the center of the world we're in the center of the world we're inside so we can't all we're seeing is anything that maybe when from the inside so what we want to do is move our camera so we're going to put a dash n t t position equals 0 200 in the y and 150 in the z i've already figured out the value so we can actually see the ball properly depending on what sort of objects you got what sort of size where the position you may want to change these values a dash camera nothing goes inside here save that i mean save refresh and there you go we have a pokeball you might be thinking where this gray sort of floor comes from that's actually part of this model so i don't, I don't need to think that i've done something prior to this video and i haven't shown you the, that was prior to this particular video i mean it was just already in the model so there you go we've got an object loading we can look around here and this looks fantastic on a vr headset because you're literally seeing this it's massive and it looks so realistic especially when you've got a good headset and you can't see any of the outside well so that is it for object loading in a frame web, web vr like i said if you have any questions i haven't said that what i meant to say like i said if you want to load other models like collider models feel free to check out the a-frame website or if you have any questions feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment if you didn't like it leave us a comment anyway we welcome it and also there'll be a link in the description to the source code from every video in this series so check that out and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day